Good evening and welcome to the Taft City Council meeting for Tuesday, February 4th, 2014. As uh, we always begin our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by uh, Councilman Orchard Cryer and an invocation by Father David of St. Mary's Catholic Church. Please rise. Pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God the Father, source of all authority. God the Son, model of love and service. God the Holy Spirit, inspiration and guide for all. Bless the members of the City Council. Guide their discussions and decisions. Fill them with wisdom and love to do your will. Fill this chamber and all present with your presence. Be with us now and always, and may we always turn to you for help in our lives. And Lord, we ask you that in your love and mercy to change the weather pattern and bless us with abundant rain and snow so that we may have adequate water for our needs and that we in turn may be wise stewards of the earth's resources. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Thank you. May we have a roll call, please? Mayor Linder. Here. Mayor Pro Tim Cryer. Here. Councilmember Miller? Here. Councilmember Noor? Here. Councilmember Waldrop? Here. Thank you. First item on the agenda is citizens' request for public comments. This is the time and the place for the general public to address the city council on matters within its jurisdiction. State law prohibits the council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. Council may receive comment and set the matter for a subsequent meeting and please limit your comments to five minutes. And tonight uh, we have Kathy Oren wishing to address the council. And I believe it's with the Chamber and Visitors Bureau. Good evening. Um, I just want to remind everyone about the installation and awards celebration at the Taft Fox this coming Thursday. It's going to be a wonderful evening. Um, we're changing it up a bit from what we've done in the past, and the response of the community has been huge. So if you have not yet got your ticket, please call us at the chamber. We'll be happy to add you to our list. Um, we have several stars coming. These are stars in quotation marks. But we also have Corbin Burnson coming, and he will be delivering um, uh, the keynote address to us, and we're very excited about that. So come and enjoy a glitzy night in old Hollywood. You'll have a great time. You'll be glad you did. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for letting, reminding us about that tonight. <clears throat> Next item is council statements and non-action. Mr. Cryer. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody, um, West Kern Oil Museum will be hosting an annual dinner on February 22nd at the West Side uh, Community Center at 500 Cascade uh, Place. They have raffles and prizes, and uh, the program there will uh, be about hydraulic frack fracking. And I encourage everybody that would like to know anything about you know, oil fracking stuff to go there and learn more, be more educated, and also support the oil museum, and, they, and enjoy a good meal, It'll be barbecue, uh, be this deep pit, if I'm mis mistaken, and, uh, I will definitely be there myself. I can't look forward to it. Um, the other thing, too, um, current regional uh, transit officials will be here in Taft. 
to take information uh, to meet their uh, to meet or meet their needs. It will be held at the Kern County Library on Cougar Way and Wildcat uh, Place, I believe, and it'll be on February 11th in 4 and 6 p.m. And um, if any have any concerns, uh, I encourage you guys all to go there and, and uh, your time to be heard. Uh, they want to improve our their services here at Queen Taft and Bakersfield and, and the surrounding areas. So if anybody has any problems now, this is your chance and opportunity to make your voice heard. So I uh, encourage everybody to uh, show up and be there. Um, also, uh, I don't want everybody to forget about, re reinitiate uh, Kathy, about the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, Gala, Gala at the Fox. It'll be pretty good. And, uh, I'm looking forward to it and see some of this stars in parentheses but uh it'll be a lot of fun and be a lot of, a lot of great things happening there and and uh, honor the the inductees or or the person that won the different awards they received for community service and stuff it's, uh, it's always an honor to be uh to give the honor to the people who can do much to the community it's hard to uh give everybody awards but these are ones that stand out for the year so <coughs> i encourage everybody to be there thank you Thank you, Mr. Cryer. Mr. Knorr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last time we got together, I, I spoke briefly about the uh, Affordable Health Care Act, Obamacare. And I remember when I, when I closed, I said that um, as developments come forward, we, we don't know about all the effects of this particular law, but as, as we move forward, we will, we will learn more and more. There was an article in the New York Times, which just came out today, and it's about the Congressional Budget Office. Now, the Congressional Budget, Budget Office just issued its first report uh, after the uh, Affordable Health Care Act was, was passed. A new analysis from the Congressional Budget Office says that the Affordable Care Act will result in more than 2 million fewer full-time workers in the next several years. <clears throat> The law is also expected to have a significant effect on hours worked, the nonpartisan budget office said in a regular update to its budget projections released Tuesday. With the expansion of insurance coverage, more workers will choose not to work and others will choose to work fewer hours than they might have otherwise. The decline in hours worked will translate into a loss of the equivalent of two and a half million full-time positions by 2024 the budget said. This is a nonpartisan congressional budget office. That's a bit scary. What that says is I no longer have to seek gainful full-time employment in order to get quality health care insurance. I can stay at home and get just as good insurance as the people who work all day because it's subsidized by the government. In point of fact, it is not subsidized by the government. It is subsidized by those who do work. So you will have a whole bunch of people sitting at home getting the same services as those who work every day to provide not only those services for their own families, but the families of those who don't do anything. So that's another spin on Obamacare, all right? And it's still, like I said last time, it doesn't matter how much sugar frosting you put on this dog turd, it still stinks, okay? More to come, I'm sure. And then secondly, another surprise. How many people have been watching the circus that is Colorado and the legalization of marijuana? I know one of the very real concerns of government and law enforcement in Colorado when they passed that law, because I remember reading an article about that, was government said, we know that we will have to work hard to keep marijuana and its effects from the young people. That is going to be difficult, but we believe we can do that. I just read an article about an entrepreneur in Colorado who is uh, moving his business to a larger building now, some 27,000 square feet, because there's a growing demand, a burgeoning demand for the effects of marijuana without smoke. So they're putting the chemicals that are active in marijuana in edibles. So this guy, uh, kind of like a small hometown hostess, if you will, is cooking up brownies with marijuana, cookies with marijuana, hard candy, even sodas pop and sarsaparilla. How about that? 
Now then, the government says we're gonna we're gonna make this legal, but we're quite certain that we can keep this away from young people. So they're taking the chemicals that are active in marijuana and they're putting it in hard candy, brownies, and soda pop, and that's gonna make it easier to keep away from children. Is that a fact? I'm having a hard time believing all of that. I do not understand where things are going. I think that's quite ridiculous. Something else to think about. I am so glad I live in the city of Taft. <laughs> the last bastion of common sense. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Knorr. <laughs> Mr. Miller. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a chance to uh, give blood today, and uh, I was just looking at my big old Band-Aid down here, and it says, <clears throat> give blood. I got the band-aid on it, so she gave blood. Oh, you might change it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they had quite a crowd. Um, the last time they were here, they had 95 applied, and I think 75 uh, were able to donate, and there were, I think I was number, almost number 80 that showed up, and I was there at 430. So uh, it's great the city of Taft is uh, supporting uh, the gift of life, and that's uh, really, really good for us. Uh, the uh, president gave his um, uh, address to the nation on, on the uh, state of the economy and state of what's going on. Um, the one thing that was ignored and ignored by the Republican uh, response is the national debt. Um, we owe 17 trillion with a T dollars to somebody or a bunch of somebodies. And now they're talking about, I just saw something flash by the screen on TV today, that they're uh, planning on uh, raising the debt ceiling to $18 trillion. That's just completely ignoring what's sensible, what's going on. Uh, that's going to come to play someday, somewhere down the road. Somebody's going to say, hey, I, I want my money back, and we're not paying it back. And they don't, I don't believe that our uh, legislators that are back there, our congressmen, our senators, and the uh, president, and the uh, all the um, administrative staff, I, I don't think anybody even plans or has a plan to pay it back. So uh, it's going to be really interesting uh, down the road. Uh, the city of Taft has to pay its bills. If we don't pay our bills, uh, we fold as a city. Uh, that's just plain and simple. And we're running basically on a ragged edge uh, most of the time uh, simply because we do pay our bills. But we have no way, we could borrow, I suppose, but we have no way to pay it back and we would go bankrupt. So um, it's, it just amazes me that um, nobody's thinking about how to, we got X amount of money coming in and there should be an equal or less amount of money going out so that we can take money and pay our debt off. So. I just thought it was interesting that nobody addressing the biggest elephant in the room, which is our national debt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Baldwin. I'd like to thank uh, the public and the West Side people for stopping by our uh, wagon and buying tri-tip sandwiches. <clears throat> they, they, we did very, very well, and I'd like to thank them and uh, let them know that we're going to be on cruise night Friday six o'clock on center street and there's going to be uh, uh, uh tumbleweed be there serving the uh, refreshments and hopefully we're going to have a band and a lot of businesses might be open i'm hoping and we we're, we're there to create something that we're lacking and uh, if we don't show up we're not helping so please show up and uh I'd like to thank all service clubs for what they do. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Waldrop. Um, I, too, had the opportunity to um, uh, give the gift of life, as they say. They took uh, a little bit from me, so somebody out there can um, maybe live a little longer or, or have a better quality. I, I like to think of every, every pint counts. Uh, it truly does. In fact, while I was there, uh, they received a call, and, and they said that if anybody had, uh, I think it was a, either a double O negative or an O negative, they were in such dire needs that they said, take it no matter what. I mean, it was they were in desperate need for that uh, type of blood. So um, obviously, 
it's important, and uh, I hope uh, everybody out there that can made the effort to give blood or do uh, or does give blood. Um, I did want to mention though that uh, Bob Foreman, a local resident, uh, was was um, recognized for his 26 gallons of contribution today. Uh, he made the 26 gallon mark, which is just incredible as far as I'm concerned. So good job to Bob Foreman. Uh, I also wanted to let folks know that that spend time on the rails to trails that. The Kiwanis Club, in conjunction with United Way and the City of Taft, and I believe PG&E, installed the uh, Born Learning Trail uh, up there a couple weekends ago. Um, it's it's really quite interesting. If you get a chance to walk the trail, there's there's signage and there's some stenciling on the on the walk path that that parents can do with their children as they're experiencing the outdoor climate. And it's uh, it's kind of cool. It really is. There's 10, 10 locations that you can go to and do activities with your children. I encourage you to do that. Um, again, we were, we were honored to be part of that. I wanted to remind everybody again about cruise night. I know Kathy's um, concentrating on Thursday night, but we don't want to forget about cruise night on Friday. And it sounds like we've got bands and food and, and refreshments available. So, and you're uh, going to guarantee the good weather, I assume? Yeah, the, the weather's going to be fine. Um, otherwise, I won't get my car out. <laughs> no, but uh, it gives me a reason to dust off my car. Thank you, Kathy. And then the last thing I'd like to mention is that uh, President's Day is coming up this month, and I want to give everybody the opportunity to take advantage of the Taft Kiwanis Club's Flags for Taft. If you have not gotten a flag in front of your business or in front of your residence, we're expanding our program a little bit. Contact myself or any Kiwanis member, and we will make that arrangement happen for you. For $50 a year, the flag is placed at least four times per year and we'd be happy to include you on our list. So thank you very much for those that are sponsoring us currently. And, and if you get a chance, go down Center Street or other areas of Taft and look at how beautiful the American flags look on President's Day. So thank you very much. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, Mr. Mayor, one yes. more thing. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bob Foreman, uh, just put in perspective, 26 gallons is 208 pints. So he's got a neat needle stuck in his arm 208 times to give blood and give to life. So it's really remarkable. You know, and I and thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, the, the, the thing I noticed when I was down there giving today is the, the disappointment of a few people that were there that got screened. And because their iron was just one point low, they were just, they were almost mad that they couldn't give blood. And so I, I really, I'm, I'm proud of people who, who want to give so freely of themselves and then on those rare occasions you can't but uh, I say come back and try it again so <laughs> so appreciate us all those first timers too so okay moving on to the Planning Commission report do we have a report tonight I see Chairman Oren is making his way to the podium good evening Mr. Oren good evening councilman and mayor um, at our last meeting, um, Wednesday, January 22nd, uh, we, uh, of course, approved our minutes, and then we went on to uh, the review of the uh, municipal service update and uh, acted on it with respect to it has been continued until our February 20, excuse me, February 19th meeting. We um, gave uh, the approval to the conditions that were requested from the modified community correctional facility, and uh, that should uh, that I believe ends our involvement. So it's it's on to uh, completion. Um, we had a lengthy discussion regarding the Center Street improvements. That um, significant discussion was surrounded the one-way street that's been proposed and that item has uh, been continued for further discussion we're <clears throat> we're seeking the community's input so that we can have um, a consensus because there is pro and con um, it seems like a good idea and we are wondering what the ramifications are so we'd like some input from the community how it's going to impact them or change their thinking and we had uh, the planning director's report uh, project updates on the la villa restaurant uh, schlumberger's lift station uh, lift solutions excuse me couch roll and uh, the bank lounge which is the 
old bank building on 5th and North, which has uh, received its temporary power, we were informed. So they're proceeding with their plans there. And we were informed of a Center Street mural grant that has come from the National Endowment of the Arts. The uh, theme for it is Our Town. And that is proceeding. We're having um, the people that are directing that are having children submit um, their art. And it's going to be similar, we feel, to what's at the library currently down by the college and the high school. And we had a lively discussion amongst the commissioners uh, working on a theme. We received the project information for the um, <clears throat> standard uh, entryway to uh, downtown area, the monument. And uh, there's been some discussion and some community input uh, as to where it should be placed. Um, this consensus seems that it needs to be near the new hotel, but it needs to be highly visible. So if it were placed on an east-west um, direction, then it may be more visible from down around the college and other parts of the community rather than being placed north-south across Center Street. So that is about the sum total of it. Do you have questions? Questions? No, oh, very good. Yeah, no. Okay. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, much. Mr. Warren. Appreciate your concise report. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll move on to department reports. Any department reports? Oh. I want to apologize first for not notifying you earlier that I was going to have a report. Um, no this is come all of a sudden, but uh, it's worthy of uh, discussing or just bring it up. Uh, KernCog has issued their draft regional housing needs allocation, which is the uh, housing number that each jurisdiction needs to meet when or initiates the process for updating our housing element. That's a process that won't be completed till about 18 months from now, but we have the numbers now or a draft uh, number for uh, Taft and all the other communities in Kern County. Um, I'm going to be attending the uh, RPAC, the Regional Planning Advisory Committee meeting on Wednesday, which uh, KernCog staff will present their draft numbers and this we have a 60-day uh, time period to uh, respond as Taft uh, what we think of their numbers and uh, where they should probably adjust them here and there but I don't see the numbers being too out of reach um, um, but I'll provide a, a full staff report at a future meeting and particularly after we have this uh, staff report presented on Wednesday at the RPAC meeting so that's all I have to uh, bring before you tonight questions Thank you. Uh, the only thing I will mention that you are Mark Staples and you are our planning director. Planning director, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case somebody wondered. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. All right, moving on to city manager statements. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to give a quick uh, update on the CCF and where we're at on that project. Um, the perimeter fence has been installed. The uh, lighting standard poles were going up today with the standards hopefully going up tomorrow. So if you see a strange glow on this area of town, that's our upgraded required lighting from yeah. CDCR that's uh, uh, quite extensive uh, lighting. Uh, we still have a few minor repairs that we're working on inside the facility with our uh, own forces. And uh, the hiring process, we pretty much got all the uh, positions filled or they're in the process of being filled, uh, being offered. Um, so that's going pretty well. We have a few uh, hurdles here and there, but we're working through those. Uh, we're still scheduled to open Feb February 24th, so it's uh, time to click away. It'll be pretty quick. Uh, moving on to another item. Um, we'll be requesting item number 16 to be pulled tonight. Um, that was the uh, design phase of Rails to Trails uh, 4. Um, we're anticipating a release of funds from Caltrans to begin the design phase of Rails to Trails 4 from 2nd Street to Highway 33. Um, but because of a change in the uh, transportation enhancement funding, which that uh, pot of money came from, um, there are some issues that need to be resolved. And tomorrow I'll be meeting with uh, um, some officials at KernCog to try to resolve those issues. It seems the state is uh, moving towards funding projects that are um, already designed rather than those that need to be designed. And uh, we went through a process to be allocated the total of six hundred eighty thousand dollars. So we got to go over and make sure we don't lose that money. So it's an important project for us. And uh, on uh, on the uh, 
blood drive today. Today was my first day, um, and I had the uh, pleasure of sharing uh, my bedside with Mr. Bob Foreman, the, the uh, uh, 26 gallon guy. So he held me hand, hold my hand until everything. Was going. A no. newbie and a veteran. <laughs> no, but uh, it was. Uh, it was inspiring to see that uh, that plaque that he was holding there with the 26 gallons and you know sitting there thinking that's a lot of blood and I believe he said he started giving blood in 1953 so there was a seven-year gap where he didn't give blood because he lived up uh, up in Mount Abel and he was unable to get down the hill but 50, you know 1953 that's a lot of years of giving blood so. but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was so I'll do it again <laughs> And you got plenty anyway. So. Yeah, that's what I said. I, he said, well, you know, you might feel a little tired. I said, I got plenty of blood. I probably won't even miss it. <laughs> that's all I have. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, item number six, city attorney statements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, I don't have anything for this evening. But he did give blood. Uh, that's what I heard. That uh, He was riding back seat behind me. I, I, I probably shouldn't, but I have to ask, was it red? I have to apologize. Whoever gets that blood, their cholesterol is going to go up three points. <laughs> well, because I'm, you know, typically we're, we always question whether lawyers really have blood. <laughs> we don't have a heart. But we yeah, have a heart. heart. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's self circulating blood. That's more valuable. <laughs> well, thank you for allowing us to poke fun at your poke fun. Get it? Yeah, the pun <laughs> that you're giving blood tonight. So, thank you. Uh, item number seven is future agenda requests. Gentlemen, do you have anything you would w like to add to a future agenda? No, not this evening. Hearing none, thank you very much. We'll move on to the consent <coughs> calendar. And we are talking about, on the, on the consent calendar, items 8 through 17, all items listed on the consent calendar shall be considered routine and will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the city council requests specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. Any items removed from the consent calendar will be considered after the regular business items. Uh, do you, uh, well, I, uh, let me go through the, the list here and make sure I get this right. Item number eight is the minutes of the January 22nd regular 20, council meeting. 21st. Or, I'm sorry, 20, 21st. Item number nine is payment of bills. Item number 10 is the second reading zone, zoning ordinance amendment relating to permits and approvals. Item number 11 is being pulled tonight. Item number 12 is to ratify the purchase of lights for Veterans Memorial Park. Item number 13 is to consider waiving park reservation fees for Paws in the Park, sponsored by Unity Thrift and the Taft Lions Club. Item number 14 is approve amendment to the Joint Powers Agreement with Western Riverside Council of Governments to include City of Taft in the HEROES program. Item number 15 is to authorize purchase of land from the Westside Economic Development LLC. This equates to approximately one acre of property that we're purchasing in order to um, expand our operation at the CCF. Item number 16 will be pulled from the agenda tonight. And item number 17 is agreement with Westside Healthcare District for inmate medical services. So gentlemen, do you have any items you wish to have pulled from the agenda? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve items 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 17 on the consent calendar. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Cryer? Yes. Councilmember Miller? Yes. Councilmember Knorr? Yes. Councilmember Walter? Yes, on everything except invoice number 30422. I abstain from that one. And Mayor Linder. Yes, thank you. Um, at this time, the City Council will uh, be adjourned to a closed session. And tonight, uh, we have on that those three items are conference with Labor Negotiator Craig Jones, City Manager, Government Code Section 54957.6, all units. Item B is conference with Legal Counsel. Existing litigation, Government Code Section 54956.9, Paragraph A, City of Taft versus CDCR. And Item C, which is Conference with Legal Counsel, Anticipated Litigation, Government Code Section 54956.9, Paragraph B. And this is one case. Thank you very much for being here tonight. We are recessed to closed session.